Welcome to the Coding Craft Channel, your one-stop shop for everything coding, engineering, and data science. Please subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to hook up an LED and a resistor on a breadboard to an Arduino and turn the LED off and on by programming the Arduino. Let's build a digital circuit first, just so you guys can understand what's going on and how we're actually going to build it on a physical breadboard. Go to Google and type in Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com. It's a great CAD software to build circuits and other 3D rendering objects. Click on, once you, first you'll have to create an account. And once you do, log in and create new. And let's go to new circuit. Once this comes up, let's select a breadboard. Oops. Let's rotate it so we can see what's going on here. And then let's grab an Arduino. I'm gonna grab the Uno R3. That's what I'm actually using. Let's look for an LED. Now LEDs, the long end, which is this curved end here, denotes that it's the positive end and the non-bent end is the shorter end, which is the negative end. And let's grab a resistor and let's grab a power supply, if I can find that. Let's also grab a multimeter. All right, all right, let's assemble this circuit. So if you don't know anything about a breadboard, the horizontal rails here are all connected. So everything on row one here is connected. Everything on row two here is connected but one and two are not connected. So if you had voltage th flowing through row two, it would not be flowing through row one or row three unless you had a cable going from two to three or two to one. The power rails, which are denoted with the plus and negative sign, they are columns and they are connected the opposite way that these horizontal rows are. So these are vertically. So this down here is connected to here, but these are not connected. Across. So first up, let's create a power rail. Um, let's bring our positive voltage over and get that flowing into our the positive rail. I'm going to change it to red. Now I'm going to get the negative ground side connected to the negative rail. I'm going to change that color to black. So now. If I turn start simulation on, volt, voltage will be flowing through the positive rail. Uh, we want voltage to be five, five volts. That's the power supply I'm using. Let's hook up our resistor. And let's hook up our LED. We are gonna have to rotate this. Let's hook up the negative end to the negative rail. And then the positive rail, I'm gonna have to flip this again. So negative, negative, comes into negative. Let's bring a positive rail to here. We are using a one kilo ohm resistor, roughly the amount of current flowing through this LED should be around five milliamps. You per, most LEDs, you don't want anything over 20 milliamps or you're gonna burn out your LED very quickly. 
I'm going to go ahead and run the simulation. This is just testing that the power supply pops on. All right, I, I, when clicking and dragging the LED earlier, I guess it didn't get set on the exact pin here, so it wasn't registering that it was getting power. So now you can see with the one kilo ohm resistor, we're getting about three milliamps and a five volts power supply. Now that we did a test run of powering the LED through a power supply, let's power it through the Arduino. So we are gonna have a signal, five volt signal coming out of here. Let's mark it red. And then we are going to have ground come to the negative rail, make that black. Let's hook up the LED. And let's hook up the resistor. Let's hook up the positive rail to the positive rail of the LED. And then we'll hook up the negative rail here. Now running this simulation, it should turn on and off this LED. Looks like it is. But I want to know how much current is flowing through this LED to make sure we're not gonna burn it out when we do build this bread, breadboard physically. So I'm gonna disconnect this here. I'm gonna bring the positive lead here, change that to red. Now I'm gonna complete this circuit by taking this down to here, making that black. All right, let's run the simulation. All right, based off our calculations, it should be around five amps. It's actually pulling three because it's actually, in this program, it's counting in the tolerance that can change from resistor to resistor based on the quality that is built. So now that we've seen this circuit be empowered by a power supply and the Arduino, Let's build this physically with the Arduino and then program the Arduino. So here's my breadboard, just like from our digital circuit. We're gonna use these power rails and some of these rails over here to power the LED. Here is the LED I'm using. It's a, just a basic white LED. Here is the long end, that's the curved end on Tinkercad. I'm going to place it with the long end up. My resistor, which is a 1K resistor. The resistor code is brown, black, black, then brown, which is 1K. So I'm going to connect that to the LED. All right. Now let's connect the Arduino port 13 and the ground to the power rails. So we have ground on the Arduino. And then I have pin 13 on the Arduino. And then power rail positive going to the positive end of the LED. And then negative rail going to the other end of the resistor. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I see this a little better. All right. 
The Arduino is out of the box. It has the default program to blink for one second and shut off for a second. So I'm gonna power it on. There we go. This LED is tied to pin 13 and this, this LED on the board is also tied to pin 13. So with the date, it should be doing the same thing as the onboard LED. So let's just go over this one more time. We have the signal, voltage signal coming out of the Arduino to the positive rail, which is powering the LED with five volts. From there, it goes to the LED, to the resistor. The resistor is gonna downgrade the current because we don't want more than 20 milliamps going through this LED. And then back to the negative rail, which goes to the ground. And we should be able to measure how much current is coming through this by hooking up the Arduino, the uh, multimeter in series here. Let me get this over here. So we should see around two to five milliamps max on the circuit. There it is, two milliamps. And the reason that is different from the resistor on Tinkercad, all resistors have a tolerance and a quality, so there's gonna be a percent error there. Well, there you have it. Pretty straightforward video. I hope you enjoyed walking through the Tinkercad, creating your digital circuit, and then coming and doing it on a real breadboard.